ReZero is one of my favorite anime ever. It's one that I thought was overrated when it first came out, but as I started watching to it, I realized that all the fans were right. And with Season 2 about to come out, I thought it would be a great time to take a look at Season 1 and some of the things that make it so special. Please, no spoilers for Season 2 or Arc 4 or anything beyond that in the comments, as I have not read that, and I really want to go into Season 2 as blind as I can. Okay, so the first thing that stood out to me was the concept. And by that, I mean that the concept isn't special. It's like a standard isekai. You have a guy from our world taking it to a fantasy world. It's been done so many times by so many shows, both before and after ReZero. But this show proves how, despite the concept not being anything new or special or interesting, it can still tell a wonderful story. ReZero is an epic fantasy with a vast world to explore, tons of interesting characters with their, all with their own motivations and desires, in a story that weaves through all of this wonderfully. The concept is only a starting point. It seems like for a lot of Isekai, the story is basically the concept. Now, not all of them, of course, and some of them are quite interesting, but I'm sure that you can think of a number of Isekai that once you know the concept, you pretty much know all there is to know about the show. Though the concept it did introduce one new mechanic here, and that is Subaru's return by death. By the way, spoilers for season one. I forgot to say that earlier. Anyway, with Subaru's return by death, it fits perfectly with the concept. Because when you're playing a video game, you die, you fail, whatever, you just reset back to the last checkpoint or save point or whatever, and then you try again. Sometimes again and again until you actually get it. But despite it fitting so well, I've never seen another anime with this type of uh, mechanic in it. Or at least not for the main character. And the whole mechanic is used wonderfully here, letting Subaru fail many times until he figures out how to stop whatever it is this time. Typically, shows have to let the main character succeed because the story would not work otherwise. Like, you can't have an action show where the main character dies facing the villain except for maybe in the final battle. With 3-0, though, Subaru can die at any point, and probably will. Now, in a way, this does lower the stakes, because Subaru doesn't die if he fails. If he dies, he'll be physically fine one second later. But while he may be physically fine, there's still the mental trauma. And he still faces the physical pain of actually dying. So it's not like him just resetting when he dies is an easier way out. Plus, any reduction in the stakes here that the reset causes is more than made up for by how it enhances the story. The way that they do the resets lets us learn a lot about the world and the characters which wouldn't be possible if not for the resets. For example, you have Puck's giant form, or seeing how insane Betelgeese is, or just the fact that Amelia introduced herself as Italia originally. None of these things could be done without the resets being mechanic, not to mention how it affects Subaru as a character. Dying so often, in oftentimes terribly painful ways, really messes with Subaru. Like there's that one episode where he just completely shut down, was overwhelmed by it all, and I'm honestly surprised he's able to pull himself back together. From a pure logical perspective, it seems like Subaru cannot lose. He can try different things, gather information, and when it doesn't work out, just die. But humans are not purely logical, especially when this kind of trauma is involved. And then there's also the fact that Subaru can't tell anyone the truth about return by death, making him alone even when he has friends beside him. Subaru is the type of character who really does care about others, and he wants to connect with him, but having this wall of force between him and the people he cares about, I feel like that's one of the things that really gets to him. And as a whole, Subaru is a wonderful character for a show like this. In some ways, he's like your standard anime protagonist. He wants to save everyone, is stubborn, refuses to quit, and rushes into things. But what makes Subaru such a great character is that the show illustrates the negatives of this type of personality. He is desperate to save Amelia, but he doesn't consider what she really wants or needs. And then he tries to ask for help from the other people in the royal selection, but he doesn't consider their perspective, that they would not want to help out a rival. But the thing that's great about Subaru and how they develop him here is that he is able to learn. He doesn't win them over with flashy strength or his pure heart, but still with knowledge taking advantage of their desires, understanding what they want, what they hope to accomplish, and forming a partnership with them. And then over time, he even earns their respect, becoming friends with him in the process. And this makes Subaru's development really fascinating and satisfying to see. Another great thing about Subaru is how weak he is. It seems like every action show has the main character being among the most powerful. 
But in ReZero's case, it's the exact opposite, with Subaru being one of the weakest in the entire show. Compare him to Rem or Ram or Amelia or Julius or Felix or pretty much anyone else in the show. He does have a couple of unique tricks, but he has nothing in terms of power to be able to take down the enemies. He's forced to rely on his wits and the strength of those around him, and that's something that is really refreshing to see. Moving beyond Subaru, because I've talked about him for quite a long time, the rest of the cast is also amazing. The thing about them is that they all feel like they are fully thought out characters. Some we know more than others, but none of them feel like they are just there for the sake of it. They all have their own desires, the things that they care about, along with the past that has made them the people that they are. And I'm sure that any character in the show could be the main character if the perspective was just swished around. This makes the world feel really full and it gives the story a lot of places to explore. It also makes the character interactions and developments feel natural because they are the things that these characters would logically do and they're not just happening to advance the story. I also really like how the show explores the love between Subaru and Amelia and also the love between Rem and Subaru. Both of these loves is built upon not seeing the other person for who they are, but instead putting that person on a pedestal and believing them to be perfect. But this is also a false love. The characters have fallen in love with the image inside their head, not the person in front of them. But this false love is also able to drive the characters forward. Rem believing in Subaru is what is able to pull him out of the pit of despair he was in. And Subaru's love for Amelia is able to make her happy in a way no one ever has. And I really love it when a show is able to make the characters be flawed, but still be great people fighting for a better world. And that's the characters here. We might do a fruits basket, actually, which I need to get back to. I should do that soon. So yeah, there's a lot to the show and a lot that I didn't talk about. But these are the things that stood out to me most after I finished rewatching season one with a couple friends. I'm sure season two will give me even more to like and more to talk about. So if you want to hear more of my thoughts about ReZero or anime in general, please subscribe and comment as well because I like hearing what you have to say. Tell me what your favorite parts about ReZero are. Though again, no season two spoilers. I would really appreciate them not being there. So again, thank you for watching, and I will see you all next time.